Have you ever wondered what makes up everything around you? It's atoms, but what's inside these tiny particles? Well, let's break it down. An atom is like a tiny solar system. At the center of this system, we find the nucleus, akin to the sun in our solar system. Now, the nucleus is incredibly small, yet it holds most of the atom's mass. Around this nucleus, there's a cloud of electrons, much like the planets revolving around our sun. These electrons are tiny, negatively charged particles that balance out the positive charge in the nucleus. But what's in the nucleus, you ask? Well, it's made up of even tinier particles called protons and neutrons. Protons carry a positive charge, while neutrons have no charge. Together, they make up the bulk of an atom's mass. So, at the heart of every atom, we find the nucleus, a tiny yet massively important component. So, what's inside this nucleus we just mentioned? You might be wondering, well, let's dive in. The nucleus, this tiny but mighty core of an atom, is primarily composed of two types of particles, protons and neutrons. Now, these aren't just floating around willy-nilly, they are held together by what's known as the strong nuclear force. This force is incredibly powerful, hence the name, and it acts to keep these particles in check, binding them together within the nucleus. Imagine the nucleus as a bustling city with protons and neutrons as the inhabitants. The strong nuclear force would be the laws and regulations that keep everything running smoothly, preventing the city from descending into chaos. Without this force, our atomic city would simply fall apart. So the nucleus is a dense core of protons and neutrons held together by the strong nuclear force. Now on to the individual roles of these particles in the next scene. Let's delve a bit deeper and talk about protons. Protons are fascinating little particles residing in the heart of an atom, the nucleus. Protons carry a positive electrical charge, making them the counterpart to negatively charged electrons. But what makes their role truly significant is their unique identity marker for atoms. Each proton contributes to the atomic number of an element, which is like the ID card for atoms. This atomic number is the definitive factor in determining what element an atom is. For instance, hydrogen has one proton, helium has two, and so on. The number of protons in an atom never changes, maintaining the atom's identity throughout its existence. Their relative mass is also noteworthy. Protons, along with neutrons, account for virtually all of an atom's mass, despite electrons whizzing around the nucleus. So protons, with their positive charge, play a significant role in the atomic world, defining what an atom actually is. We've got protons covered, but what about neutrons? Neutrons are the unsung heroes of the atomic world. They're similar to protons in terms of mass, but unlike protons, they carry no electrical charge. That's right, they are neutral, hence the name neutron. So, you might ask, what role do these neutral particles play in the nucleus? While they may not contribute to the atom's identity like protons, they do play a vital role in maintaining the stability of the nucleus. Think of them as the glue that holds the atomic family together. Despite having no charge, neutrons help to counterbalance the repulsion between positively charged protons. Without neutrons, the protons within the nucleus would repel each other so strongly that the atom would simply fall apart. The presence of these neutral particles allows atoms to exist in peace without the constant threat of atomic disruption. In this sense, neutrons are the peacemakers of the atomic world. Despite being neutral, neutrons are essential for the stability of the nucleus. Now, let's explore atomic number and mass number, two key terms in nuclear chemistry. The atomic number, quite simply, is the number of protons in an atom. This number is fundamental because it determines the identity of the atom. For instance, an atom with six protons will always be carbon, no matter how many neutrons are present. On the other hand, the mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons in the atom's nucleus. It gives us an idea about the overall weight of the nucleus. For example, if we have a carbon atom with six protons and six neutrons, its mass number is 12. In the notation of chemical elements, the atomic number is usually written as a subscript to the left of the element symbol and the mass number as a superscript to the left. So the atomic number tells us the identity of an atom while the mass number gives us a glimpse into the nucleus. Ever heard of isotopes? They're quite fascinating. Picture this, atoms of the same element but with a twist. 
they have different numbers of neutrons. Yes, you heard it right. They possess the same number of protons, hence the same atomic number, but their neutron count varies, leading to a different mass number. This anomaly gives birth to isotopes. Now you may wonder, does this variation in neutron count affect the properties of the element? The answer is yes and no. Isotopes of an element share similar chemical properties because these are primarily determined by the number of protons or the atomic number. However, their physical properties such as density and melting points may vary due to the difference in mass numbers. For instance, hydrogen, the lightest element, has three isotopes, protium, deuterium and tritium, each having one proton but varying numbers of neutrons. So, isotopes, while being of the same element, can have different properties due to varying numbers of neutrons. Now, let's dive into the world of nuclear forces. Imagine a group of positively charged particles, like protons, all crammed into a tiny space, like a nucleus. Now, according to our understanding of electricity, these like charged particles should repel each other and scatter in all directions. But that's not what happens in an atomic nucleus. Instead, the protons and neutrons stick together, forming a stable nucleus. The force that holds them together is what we call the strong nuclear force. This force is one of the four fundamental forces of nature, alongside gravity, electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force. Out of these, the strong nuclear force is, as the name suggests, the strongest. It's about a hundred times stronger than electromagnetism, which is why it can overcome the electrical repulsion between protons. But there's a catch. The strong nuclear force only works over very short distances, about the size of a nucleus. Outside this range, it essentially becomes irrelevant. That's why you don't see protons and neutrons sticking together outside the nucleus. It's like a super strong magnet that only works when you bring objects really close to it. Now, the strong nuclear force doesn't discriminate between different types of particles. It acts equally on protons and neutrons. This is why neutrons, despite their lack of electrical charge, play a crucial role in maintaining the stability of the nucleus. They contribute to the strong nuclear force without adding to the electrical repulsion. This delicate balance between the strong nuclear force and the electrical repulsion between protons is what determines the structure and stability of atomic nuclei. It's a tenuous balance, and any disruption can lead to nuclear reactions, releasing tremendous amounts of energy. In essence, the strong nuclear force is like the glue that holds the nucleus together. It's the force that allows atoms to exist, and by extension, it's the force that allows us and everything we know to exist. Despite the repulsion between protons, the strong nuclear force manages to keep the nucleus intact. Finally, let's talk about nuclear stability, a key concept in nuclear chemistry. It's like a tightrope walk, where the tightrope is the balance between two forces and the walker is the nucleus of an atom. Consider this, the nucleus is a tiny space filled with positively charged protons. Now, like charges repel each other, so why don't protons just fly apart? That's where the strong nuclear force comes into play. It's an attractive force that binds protons and neutrons together in the nucleus, acting like a super strong glue. However, this force only works over extremely short distances. Now imagine if all the protons in a nucleus were replaced with neutrons. Would the nucleus be more stable because there are no repelling charges? Not really. Neutrons, while neutral, are important for stability, but only up to a point. The neutron-to-proton ratio is a crucial factor in nuclear stability. For lighter elements, this ratio is typically one-to-one. -one. As we move to heavier elements, more neutrons are needed to stabilize the nucleus. Too few or too many neutrons can make the nucleus unstable, leading to radioactive decay. And here's where we stumble upon a fascinating concept, the nuclear binding energy. It's the energy required to disassemble a nucleus into its constituent protons and neutrons. The greater the binding energy, the more stable the nucleus. In essence, it's a measure of how tightly the nucleons, protons and neutrons are held together. Interestingly, iron-56, a specific isotope of iron, has the highest nuclear binding energy per nucleon, making it the most stable nucleus. This is why energy is released when lighter elements fuse or heavier elements split, both processes seeking to reach a more stable state. 
So the stability of a nucleus depends on a fine balance of forces and the right neutron to proton ratio. Isn't that fascinating?